home grill advantage. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys? So my wife and I finally got to take our 10 year anniversary trip to California. We are huge wine drinkers and we wanted to go to Sonoma County and go to all of our favorite wineries and visit some of our favorite vineyards and all of those things. We went, took some family and we took some friends and we saw some amazing sights and we had some amazing experiences. But in the middle of all of that, one of the things that I wanted to do really bad was cook. I always want to cook. So I was able to get some footage. We got some really good meat. I got a tri-tip from uh, this place called Big John's uh, Market in Cloverdale, Cloverdale, California. And I got some footage of the cook. So here it is. Hope you guys enjoy. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Barbecue Brand, a.k.a. Brand the Man. And I am here in sunny Cloverdale, California. As you can see these views behind me. My Lord, we are having a great time out here. And as I always tell y'all, just because you're traveling doesn't mean that you can't cook some great food wherever you are, right? It's all about cooking technique. So let me show you a little bit about what we're doing today. We went to a little place called Big John's Market, which is an awesome little grocery spot and they have some great foods. We're actually gonna be cooking a tri-tip tonight. Um, this is a huge tri-tip. Normally they come between two and three pounds. This one was like 3.7 pounds. So we're going to be cooking this kind of like in the reverse sear method. Um, we have a Weber here today, so we're going to be cooking it low and slow until we get to an internal temperature of around 120, 125. And then we're going to take it off and season it up a little bit, pat it dry, season it up, and then hard sear it. So let me show you a little bit about the first tip that I want to let you know about today. So here we have a Weber grill. All right, this is what we had, right? This is what we had whenever we came here. So I said, let me see what we can do with it. Not a very big uh, Weber. This is the Genesis series. Okay, gas grill. Um, but we can still cook low and slow on this, all right? Very first thing that you do, always, whenever you get to a place, an Airbnb, uh, some house that you don't know, uh, you're not familiar with the cooking products that they have or the, the, the cooking utensils, tools, you get in here and you clean it. So I took my wire brush and I got in here and I cleaned everything to make sure that I do not get any flare ups on my flavorizer bars right here or underneath. So I cleaned this very well because we're gonna cook low and slow, but then we're gonna crank up the heat so that we can sear it hard, right? So we got this all cleaned up. We actually have some duck sausage that we found over there. So we're gonna cook this first. And then I'm going to cut this heat down. We're going to cook at about 200, between 200 and 225 degrees. Get this tri-tip into that internal temperature that we want and sear it off hard. So we're actually going to cook low and slow on this tri-tip today. So y'all stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do with it. So here we have the tri-tip that we got from Big John's. This is, as you can see, you have the three tips, which is hence the word tri-tip. Uh, it comes off of the sirloin and it's the bottom tip of the roast. So um, it usually comes around, like I said, two and a half pounds or so. This one was uh, almost four pounds. So this is a big boy. Uh, we actually got a thermometer at the store that we can stick in here to uh, monitor the temperature while we're cooking it slow. And then whenever we get to that internal temperature, we can take it off and kind of pat it dry, put our seasoning on there, pat that in really good, and then hard sear it. And then we'll be good to go. We'll let it rest for a little while. Always let your beef rest. So we're probably going to let this rest for a good 10 minutes, 15 minutes to let the juices redistribute throughout your meat. And then we'll be good to slice. So this is actually, I think this is going to come out really good. As you can see, it's a little, it doesn't look like beef, right? This is actually pre-marinated. This is not something that I get very often is pre-marinated meat. I like to do everything myself. But hey, we're in California, Big John's came highly recommended. So um, this was marinated in a Bloody Mary mix. So I thought that sounded ultra interesting. So we went ahead and got that. So we're gonna roll with it. I'm gonna go ahead and cook this just like this and then we'll season it a little bit uh, after it comes off of the pit, uh, cooking low and slow. Cause I do see that they have some seasoning on here already. So I don't wanna add too much. I'm just gonna add a little bit of herbs and a little bit more salt and we'll get it going soon all right so now we got our tri-tip 
from resting we rested the tri-tip um, out of the refrigerator for probably about an hour you always want to rest your meat you don't want to put it on the grill cold because the meat fibers are really tight you want that to be nice and loose and you want everything to be distributed evenly so we're going to go ahead and take this tri-tip that we have now and we're going to put it on our pit i have a piece of foil in the pit right now we're going to fold the foil over the side of the tri-tip that is going to protect it from the side of uh, the pit that has the heat so this is how we're going to cook indirectly for this particular pit like i said we have the weber out here this is what we were given so we're going to go ahead and make it work so let's go ahead and get it on the pit here we have the thermometer that we're going to go ahead and monitor our temperature with we're going to put it on this side of the pit and we're just going to fold that over just like that we're not going to cover it we just want to fold it to protect it from that heat on this side we only have this burner on so we're going to have our heat coming up here and it's going to circulate around our tri-tip we're going to go ahead and monitor this we're probably going to come on and check and check on it in about another 30 40 minutes kind of see where we're at we'll be right back All right, we've been cooking this tri-tip at right around 250, 275. So low and slow, as you can see, we still have it rolling with the foil covering the tri-tip, protecting it from the heat. Uh, we are right at about 122, 122, 123. So we're actually gonna take this tri-tip off and we're gonna dry it off, put a little bit more seasoning on top and we're gonna sear it hard. So we'll come back and we'll show you how we do that. All right, so we got the tri-tip, we took it off. We were at an internal temperature of about 123. We took some paper towels and we dried it off and then seasoned it. Why did we do that? Because we don't want the meat wet when we sear because all we're gonna be doing is steaming the meat. We're taking that heat and we're evaporating the water before we actually get a good sear. So we dry the meat off and then we put our seasoning on. So now we're gonna go ahead and hard sear this. We got the temperature up to upwards of 550, 575 degrees right now, which is great. I cleaned out the pit. Remember I told you, clean out your pit first so you don't get those flare ups. So we're gonna go ahead and sear this hard for probably about two minutes on each side and then we'll be, we'll be perfect to go ahead and let it rest. So let's do that. That is what you want. Yeah. All right, we've been on the pit for about two minutes. And so let's go ahead and flip it. Look at those beautiful grill marks. Awesome, awesome, awesome. As you can see, no flare ups. Go ahead and close this quick so you don't lose your heat. All right, so we've been having this tri-tip resting for probably about 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and cut into it now. It should be a perfect medium to medium rare. And of course, we're gonna taste it, see how it came out. Let's do it. So of course, we got these nice grill marks on it and we're gonna cut against the grain, right? You never cut with the grain, you cut against the grain. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it and see what we got. Get some nice slices here. That is cutting really beautifully. Look at that. That is awesome. That is exactly what we were going for right there. All right, let's cut a piece of that. All right. My God. First of all, you don't need teeth for that. You already know that. You don't need to eat that. It's so good. Perfect amount of spiciness. Perfect amount of salt. Like I said, it was already pre-marinated, so I didn't want to add too many more spices to it, but I did add a little bit. It was very spice forward, the seasoning that I used, but it did have a little bit of salt in it. That helped with that crust. It helped to crust it over whenever I seared it hard on both sides. It tastes amazing. You get all of those notes. That Bloody Mary mix is really coming through. You get that deepness of that Bloody Mary mix and also the saltiness is just bringing it all together. It's really marinating, marinating marin everything together. Let's get another bite. Look at this. 
That's almost like a brisket. That's how you want your beef cooked right there. Incredible. Home grill advantage. The crowd is on the field. We are here in Southern California, baby. It's beautiful. The food is good. We drinking good wine. I'll see you next time. The crowd is on the field. If you ain't sneezing, it ain't season, baby.